Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston, where a man might come to make his fortune and remain to learn that the loyalty and courage of his dog team are worth far more than their weight in gold. Mayo Landing, where the annual dog race was the year's most important event. If he didn't have an eye, he'd be tearing your arm off. That's how it come. Any mail for me, son? Well, let's see here. Uh, oh, yes, sir, Mr. Adams. I hear the betting's pretty heavy for you to win the old Yukon tomorrow, Buck. I mean the real big heavy bettors up in Dawson. Got a little money out of myself. Five straight years a winner is too long for any man. This year, I'm gonna beat you. Not with dogs like that. Savage <laughs> is the only bad dog in my kennel. Otherwise, I've got the finest pack of dogs money can buy. Money still doesn't make a first-rate dog team. What are you doing with this dog in town, Mr. Adams? Brought him into town to see if anybody wants to buy him. Well, how much do you want for him? A hundred dollars. If you can't break him to harness, he'd still make a first-rate breeding dog. Forget about it, Dave. You stick to business and let dog racing to those sports who can afford it. Oh, Dad, you don't understand. This is a beauty. <laughs> Please don't hit him, Mr. Adams. I'll kill him. Hold it, Buck. That's no way to treat a dog. I've had enough minute, of you, Wait a minute. What's the argument here, gentlemen? He was going to beat up this dog. It's my dog. I can do anything I want to. Uh, easy, boys. Easy. It's no wonder that dog is a savage. With the treatment he gets, you probably meant him that way yourself. Well, you listen to the great authority. Knows all about raising dogs. I suppose you could turn him into a regular little lamb. There isn't a dog alive that I couldn't gentle in a week or so. Would you like to make a little bet on that? Why not? Name it. Uh, don't go out on a limb, Hank. 500 says you can't train Savage in two weeks. I won't bet, but I'll make a deal with you. I'll buy the dog from you for $10, and if I can't train him in two weeks, I'll pay you a bonus of $500. You heard him, Sergeant. It's a sucker deal, but he made the terms. Yes, I heard it. I think you fellas ought to calm down and think things over. He's all yours, Hank. Hand over the ten dollars. I've heard talk about you entering the race this year. Any truth to it? Well, partly. Mounties still aren't allowed to compete for cash prizes. But I wrote the inspector that I'd contribute my winnings, if any, to the, to the hospital fund. You sure must be keen to enter. I am. I always wanted to see how King would do in a race. How do you feel about it, boy? I hope the inspector lets you enter. I'd like nothing better than to try my dogs against yours. See you tomorrow, Hank, at the starting line. You bet. This dog has all the points of a champion leader. I heard he was well on his way till Buck started breaking his spirit. Would you let me try working with him, Mr. Weber? I'm sure I could bring him around. This dog's gonna take a lot of patience and experience, Dave. Dave has a way with dogs. He's good with them. And he's touching in his voice. Enough of that talk, Weber. I told you before, and I'll tell you again. My boy's going to be a businessman and amount to something. Are you saying that I don't amount to anything? Oh, wait a minute. I don't mean it like it sounds, Hank. But you're one in a hundred. I've seen others get the dog racing fever and lose their shirt. It's a vice worse than gambling. Ah, oh, Dad. You don't understand. You don't feel that way, do you, Sergeant? Well, I... I wouldn't exactly call it a vice, but... Uh, well, now, look, Dave, uh, don't get me in the middle. This is between you and your father. There'll be no more discussion about it. Get back to work, Dave. Now, come on, boy. Let's go home. Don't buy the kettle if you have a chance, Sergeant. Thanks, Hank. I will. 
Any mail for me from Dawson? Well, no, sir. I've been looking, too. I guess I'm even a little more anxious than you are. Well, there's still a freight sled due in this evening. Maybe he has some mail for me. I'll drop around then. Come on, King. Hello, Kiska. Well, Davy. Just want to see how they look, Mr. Weber. You've not only seen them once before today, but you went along and I took them for a run. Look, son, I don't want to get us in any more trouble with you, Paul. One of these days, I'm going to win a race. He'll change his mind. You'll see. Oh, I have no doubt you'll win a race one of these days, but about your Paul changing your mind. Uh-uh. I'll finish feeding them, Hank. you got more important things to do this evening. Thanks, Davy. But be careful with the savage over there. He's a pretty tough customer. Chinook boy. Up, up. That's a boy. Unknown to Hank, Dave had worked with Savage for hours that afternoon and shown the dog he had nothing to fear from him. Now he wished to go one step further and win Savage's affection. Here, boy. Have some more dinner, boy. You'll feel better. Now, that's no way to act, Savage. Now, let's be friends, Savage. Easy, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Have some more dinner. That's right, boy. Take a good sniff. No fear smell there, is there, boy? Here, boy. No, sir. Because I'm not afraid of you, that's why. You got no reason to fear me. Easy, easy, easy. That's a boy. That's a boy. Come in. Come on, King. Sit. Too busy to be wished a little luck? Never too busy for you, Sergeant. Well, I just thought I'd drop around to see how you're getting along with Savage. Well, I haven't given him any time yet. Too busy getting in shape for tomorrow. Once the race is over, I'll start working with him. Well, I still wish you hadn't made that deal. You seem worried. I hate to see an old friend lose $500 just because he acted on impulse. <laughs> when I win that race tomorrow, $500 won't mean that. All right. You mind if I examine the dog? Maybe he's not as bad as he looks. No, oh, go right ahead. Dave's out there now giving the fellas their feed. You stay, King. Well, of all, Hank, come here. Look at that. Howlin' G. Willikins. You know better than that, Hank. Uh, you're right. Mine's startling. Let's go out easy like. Way back when you were a puppy, I bet you licked a lot of friendly hands. I bet those friendly hands rubbed your ears, too. Didn't they, boy? That's right. <laughs> Take it easy, Savage boy. Take it easy. They're friends. That was a dangerous thing to do, Davy. You took a mighty big chance, son. Well, I took it slow, Mr. Weber. He's really not a vicious dog. Must be the way Buck Adams handled him. Well, that was my thought, too. You see, Buck trains with a whip and chain, and that's the worst thing to do for a spirited dog. Might be what was wrong with him. Well, whatever it is, Davy seems to have found the answer. You're still worried about my $500, Sergeant? <laughs> No, Hank, not anymore. <laughs> Reason I came up here to see you is my Dawson betting syndicate is not fooling around. If you don't win that race tomorrow, you might just as well keep those dogs pointed right straight for the Alaskan border. There are only five teams on the race, man, T. Uh. The only competition I'm worried about is Hank Weber. What's all this talk about the Mountie racing? You don't figure him? He hasn't got his permission through from Dawson yet. Right now, I doubt if he will. Entry's closed at midnight tonight. Then all we have to do is uh, take care of Weber. We're in. Take care of him? Yeah. I'm afraid of with that shipment of beef. often see this stuff way up here. You're lucky to get it. Here's the bill in all the cases. Uh, laws won't be any more. I guess you want to settle up, huh? It's 
Three hundred? Can't meet comes high up here. But you said I could have the whole shipload for a hundred. That wasn't including freight rates. After all, I made three trips up here from the coast. That's my regular mileage, Adams. I'll be frank. I haven't got it. I put all my available cash on the race. Oh, now, wait a minute. You'll be paid. You meet me at the finish line at the end of the race tomorrow. I'll even give you 350 A bonus for helping me get my dogs in first-class condition. Is it a deal? Well, okay, but I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I'm stuck with 350 more good reasons why I've got to win that race tomorrow. What was it you were saying about taking care of Hank Weber? Not Hank. Not Hank. His lead dog. You get his lead out of the race, you have no competition. I wonder what's bothering those dogs. Dave immediately ran to get Sergeant Preston, Thanks, who came to Hank Weber's cabin with a doctor. After the doctor had treated Hank and left, Preston remained to talk to Hank and examine the evidence he found. Strychnine, just as I thought. Why, that's dirty, inhuman. Where'd you find it? In Kobo's run? It's not so much me being slugged, but why poison my lead dog? Well, it's too bad you're unable to identify the man that slugged you. That isn't as important as the who sent him to poison Kobo. And I'll tell you that one's name, Sergeant. Buck Adams. Better be careful, Hank. Dangerous business making accusations on mere suspicion. Well, maybe I have no proof, but I'm positive he's guilty, and I'll tell him to his face. How's Kobo, baby? Well, the antidote the sergeant gave him work. He's relaxed now and breathing regular. Good. I'll look at him in a minute. Do you think he'll be in shape to race tomorrow? <laughs> I doubt it. Even if he is, you'll not be able to race, Hank. Remember what the doctor said. Complete quiet for a week. I sure know how you feel. Sure do, Hank. Has anyone around been buying canned beef? Not from us. Pop hasn't stocked any in months. Is there anyone else in town that sells it? Not that I know of. But you better check with Pop. Well, thanks, Dave. I'll stop by the store on my way home. Try not to take it too hard, Hank. Sure. Look after him, will you, Dave? Sure will, Sergeant. Come on, King. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe I could drive in the race for you. Why, well, that's out of the question. I don't even have a lead dog. Well, Savage could do it. You're more of a kid than I thought. Well, let me try him tomorrow early. We'll soon know. And if you work in harness, please let me drive for you, Hank. Please. Well, I don't know what to say, Davy. I just don't know. There hasn't been any canned beef up here in months, Sergeant. Folks find it too expensive. I heard there was a shipment of surplus army tin beef down at Whitehorse, but didn't get up this far. Well, thanks, Mr. Daggett. Excuse me. Oh, wait a minute, Sergeant. This is for you. I'm headquarters at Dawson. Yeah, great news, isn't it, Sergeant? <laughs> Expect to give you permission to race. Well, I suppose. But Hank being out of the race, though, takes the keen edge off the competition. Well, like I always say, no matter who it is, may the best team win. And you're right. I'll drop around in the morning and leave my carbine in gear before the race, if I may. Sure thing. Good night, Sergeant. Good night. Come on, King. The day of the great race. Six contestants are competing. Each team leaves the starting point at three minute intervals.
Buck Adams is fourth man up to be followed by Sergeant Preston. Hank Weber, last year's winner, is out because of injury, though he has not yet been officially canceled. Dave, are you entering the race? Yes, for Hank. He gave me permission. I was working with Savage all morning. <laughs> he even seemed a lot more eager than I did. Good. I'm glad for you, Dave. I wish you all the luck in the world. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Nothing to get excited about, boy. Take it easy. I object to that lead dog in Weber's outfit. He's vicious and unmanageable. There's nothing in the rules that prevents a man from using any dog that he wishes. That's true, Mr. Adams. Your objection's overruled. You're up next. Better prepare to start. race is run over a triangular course, from Mayo Landing to North Creek, then over to Ferguson's Ferry, and back on the last leg to Mayo Landing, a distance of 16 miles. Just what I thought. You need anything, Weber? No, I got everything I need. Well, get inside. This gets even better. You're the one who slugged me, aren't you? I wouldn't talk so cocky, old man. You're just liable to disappear, not be found till the spring thaw. Now get in. Ha! According to the rules of dog sledding, a man in the lead on a defined trail must move aside upon being overtaken. Hold over, Buck. I'm coming by. Hunt, oh! King! On you, Huskies! Savage ran as one possessed. He hated Buck Adams and was trying to overtake him. Come on, Savage, move up on him. Whoa, King! Everybody down! Husky's got a torn pad, King. We're going to have to do the best we can without him. Oh, Savage. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Well, what's the matter, Sergeant? Lame dog, but don't bother about me, Dave. Go on. Hey, hey, go, Savage. Go,
It was Dave's race and everyone knew it. He started six minutes later than Buck Adams and arrived at the finish only a second behind him. Gosh, Pop, I'm sorry. Congratulations, son. I'd look kind of foolish trying to argue with a hero, now wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Knew that dog was unreliable. Guess I ought to thank you at that, Mr. Adams. If it hadn't have been for Savage trying to catch him, we'd never have won the race. Well, now the syndicate will be gunning for us up here and at Dawson. Hank knows I'm the one that slugged him, and he also knows we tried to poison his dog. Where is he? Tied up at your cabin. Hop in. Hey, Adams, what about the bill for the meat? I haven't got time. Wait, try! Hey! Tough luck, Sergeant. Too You'd bad, have won Sergeant. easily if your dog hadn't have gone lame. Thanks, Dave. It's nice of you to say that. Where's Hank? Well, I don't know. Doctor said he could get up for the end of the race. That's funny. I wasn't down to his house. I went down there just a little while ago to... Well, never mind why I went there. Well, it isn't like him to miss the finish. You driving his team, it meant a lot to him. Right. You're the law here, Sergeant. How do I go about collecting a bill? A what? A bill for $300 worth of canned beef, that's what. Canned beef? Oh, so that's who it is. Hank was right. Where is Buck? He left here fast. He and a fella named uh, Manti. The Dawson gambler? That's him. Watch Muskeg for me, will you? Sure, Sergeant. Time, man. T. I'll get the sled ready. nothing on me, Preston. No? You were attempting to abduct Hank by gunpoint when I stopped you. I think you'll be in jail as long as Man T. Untie him, Man T. <laughs> you know, if it hadn't been for his dog going lame, we all know the sergeant probably would have won. And if that had been the case, we also know where the prize money would have gone. <laughs> hello, sergeant. Well, hello, sergeant. Dave and I decided that the money ought to go to the hospital fund. Here it is. Well, that's a fine gesture, Hank. He's the one to thank. And to show my appreciation, Dave, I'm giving you Savage. Oh, gosh, Hank. I don't know how to thank you. Hello, boy. You know, Savage is going to be the greatest lead dog in the Yukon. Maybe even as good as King. Well, I hope Savage gives you what King has always given me. Love and loyalty. And remember, Dave, that goes both ways. Well, King... Buck and Manti in custody awaiting trial. For us, this case is closed. <laughs>